very good morning to you crafty lot today is saturday the 4th of july so happy independence day if you are watching in from america we are going to be making these lovely <coughs> longer they're not really lariat because they are pulled together with this lovely focal bead in the middle today i love these necklaces because in the summer when you are <coughs> wearing sort of tank tops or lesser clothes you don't really want anything at the top in your neckline and these are sort of will sit on your breast or just on the, your breast giving a really nice focal necklace for you morning mandy morning maxine i hope everybody's okay the weather is pretty miserable here um where i am but um, it's very windy and overcast but i'm hoping the sun's gonna come out later because i need to pop up um to the high street and go to boots and get a few bits from the shops so <clears throat> To make things easier and to string your beads quicker, we're going to be using bead spinners today. Morning Brenda, Alicia, Francis, Nat, Margaret, Helen, Michelle, Karen, Camille, Ruth, Doris, Elaine, Brenda, Alicia, Pamela, Nat. Margaret, Debbie, Marcia, Chris, oh, there's so many of you lovelies are here today. Simon. So Simon has um, created little bundles for us with this product. And um, I really love this because you can make so many of them. As you only need to use one sparkle rose on your necklace. You got five in the bundle. So you can make five necklaces from each of the bundles. Now, on our website, I always show this bum. I'm sure you know this already. We got Facebook tutorials as a category. So you can access it from the side or from the top of the categories. Today is the sparkle rose necklace. And then this is what we've been doing over the last 15 weeks. There is so many different projects in there. You can go back and view them and have a look what we've been doing. So today we're doing the sparkle rose. Um, I'll just click on that and bring it up right we added the bead spinners i'm going to show you in a minute how the bead spinners have worked there's a couple of little little different types here um the wooden one is a little bit bigger and the plastic one is a little bit smaller i got both of them i love this when i'm traveling or going anywhere because it's quite nice and little and petite and you can spin less grammage in there as well so that they're both great but i got an electronic one as well love that as well so um they are really great tool to speed up picking up seed beads now the bundles themselves they should be 15 pounds but down to 9.99 today and each one of those bundles you get five of these lovely acrylic roses you get a 50 gram 50 grams a large bag of fgb seed beads and you get two strands of the although this one is in a bag a larger and a smaller crystal needle and thread in there as well now the fgb seed beads i don't think we've used it before so let me just explain to you this is a um, sort of a mid quality between the the craft seed beads and the taho but um because it it's, comes as a really good price um, I guess you get about five times as much of this as you would get of the Toho seed beads. Oh, Sarah's on there. Good morning, Sarah. I hope you're okay. She was in the, she was at telly today, yesterday, and um, I think she had quite a late night as well. So hopefully you can relax today. Right, bead spinners. So I just um, added all my seed beads from the bag to my spinner. And that's the larger one. This is the smaller one as well. So this is a 50 gram bag and you can see how much it goes into the wooden one. If I then try to put the same amount in the smaller one, I can't because it's probably about 30 gram is going to be fitting in there. They both work exactly the same. So you would spin it with one hand. Just get those rope beads out of the way you could spin it with one hand and hold your you, it's great to when you do your um sort of beaded flowers as well with wire and it's great for when we're doing something like this when we need to string on long parts of um, our necklaces just seed beads and it makes 
life really really easy because you can very easily spread you know they just sort of jump on the needle so i'm using a big eye needle this comes with the wooden spinner as well and i just inserted my thread right at the end the whole of the needle is an eye so it's great because you can work with thicker mediums as well um this thread is one of our own threads we imported this a couple of years ago this is a little bit thicker than super long size d so it's it's good for some of the um weaving projects but um something like this um, but you're stringing so many beads and using in the same way, just a little bit thicker and it's a little bit stronger. So to use the bead spinner, you just have to find the right angle with your needle. It's really just working out what's the most comfortable for you to hold it. Um, I do swap between hands. Sometimes I hold it with the right hand. Sometimes I would hold it with the left hand just to sort of alternate it because this hand, my right hand, where I got my needle in, it's just going to be standing there in one um, one motion and I'm spinning the spinner with my other hand between my thumb and index finger and as you can see the beads are just jumping up and coming on there so in a few seconds we added you know almost a couple of inches worth of beads to our strand um, but equally after a sort of a little while I would change my hand just to give <coughs> excuse me my hand a break and spin it from the other side and it's quite easily they're going to just jump on it again you just have to find the right angle with the needle so look how easy they all going up there you just have to find the right angle with your needle and then off it goes onto your strand so when you're doing something like this, then you're going to need over probably about a meter of thread just with seed beads themselves. Um, there is two ways you can construct this necklace. You can either do your little bits first and just pick up the number of seed beads or I rather would measure it with a ruler today because counting all those seed beads probably there's about 50 seed beads in there it's going to take you forever so measuring it with a ruler probably it's the easiest and um, less pain method i guess um i would sort of spin as much on there as i can so i've just been doing it for the last um couple of minutes here or not even that by talking and I got a good 20 centimeter of beads on there sometimes you can have two beads which are stuck together like this one let me just suspend it here so I can show it to you nice and easy and quite I would what I would do I just go with my nail and then press down on the second bead and then it will release it is just a process how they be made and um, sort of reheated to have that nice little edges they can stuck together a little bit but very easily you can separate them up so that's that's the bead spinner it's really worth to get one of these because it's going to make life so much easier let me know if you um had one of these before or if you use them how did you find them um i just think you know it's makes life really really easy and um, sarah likes to use these as well when she does her beaded flowers because you're going to need meters and meters of the same bead spun on the wire to be able to create those lovely roses and lavenders orchids or whichever one you are working on So I keep on going and just add a few more. I'm just going to add a little bit more so I can show you then how to attach it to the flower. We're going to have to use a normal needle as well. And I just pink the beads everywhere. Just keep and just have, find the right angle how you can have the beads sort of just jumping on your needle. You might have to adjust your needle. So I would just go in and with my hand... If I need to open this up a little bit, <clears throat> because it's a really a curved shape, I can just adjust that shape at the end and then back I go and start spinning again. But it depends what's the most comfortable for you and how is the easiest to hold it. And again, just do a little bit more. 
um judy, judy is saying i have a battery operated one and it's great yes i've got one as well and i did get it out to use it but um when you use the battery operated one it makes a noise and i didn't want to have this background white noise i guess on my video so i'm not using that one today but with the battery operated one um the battery obviously would spin the spin around so you would have to do anything with your other hand it you just have to hold your needle as it spins itself around they're a little bit more expensive but I, they worth every penny because they make life really really easy i do use all i got three of them i got the mini one i got this wooden one and the battery operated one and i do use all of them um for sort of different project if i just have to you know do something with a few beads and i perhaps only got 20 gram of seed beads left i use the smaller one because with the bead spinner what's the main thing about it that um, it has to be sort of at least a third filled with beads to be able to pick up the beads nicely because if it's empties down and it's not going to have uh, many beads at the bottom it will be harder and harder for your needle to catch those beads because as we're spinning around the needle is just sort of gets hooked into those holes and that's how it works that it picks up all of those beads really nice make it life make make lifesaver i guess some of these tools and they are really simple i guess but uh, really makes a life so much easier um anything i use the bigger bead spinner but only have a few beads to do they go everywhere yes so then if you just want to use it with like you know 10 20 grams of seed beads then do get one of these smaller ones because it's smaller it holds less amount of beads and you can do much of the swing i think these ones are 3.99 so they're not um and they're really great as well because nice and little and compact and um, if i go on holiday i'm one of those people that i have to take something with me to make and um, i will take one of those little ones and why if i was making the flowers last year when we did a poinsettia workshop at the warehouse i was making up these wreaths with the poinsettia and i um, had to go back and forwards to Hungary a couple of times so I'd taken it with me on the plane I was making the little flowers and you can imagine the people walk past and even the next they said to me they were like memorized by it and um, watching what I was doing with the wire but that's something like that you can do on the plane or the train or anything as long as you spin your beads up you can keep going and forming your little leaves or anything like that so it's a really a great tool to use um jane is asking can you explain about these beads and what are they like please right so these are fgb seed beads they send for fancy glass beads they are manufactured in china but i'm going to bring this up to you and show it to you on the needle look how um even they are they are really really even um if you get your Chinese seed beads, which are what I um, used for these original samples, you can see the quality of the seed beads. Sometimes you get a bigger one and sometimes you get a smaller one. I made these samples quite some, some time ago and um, it still looks great because the craft seed beads are really cheap. So for a bag which costs one pound 75 two pound or two pound 50 you would get 100 gram of seed beads in there which will go forever and we used a few of them for the flowers as well but um these fgb seed beads we only found them last year when we had our this year unfortunately we couldn't go to our own buying trip but we found them last year and they do so many amazing colors and i was just really amazed with the quality they are so as you can see again i just picked up a few more they are really nice and even quality they're good for some of the bead weaving projects although i am a really big fan of toho seed beads so i keep using the tohos for the bead weaving projects but something like this or your flowers or you know, some of the bead weaving projects are great too as well i think sarah used this for her ombre choker necklace as well and it comes in so many different colors they're really great 
Our server is saying if you spin too quickly, they fly out. So, um, slightly slow the spin down and it should be stopped the, those beads to fly away. Is that for me or is that, was that for Anne? I think it was for Anne, what she was saying. Um, yes, but I think, you know, you just have to find the, the right angle and you have to find the right um, speed, I guess. That's what's great about the motorized one because it, it is the motorized one spins around in the right speed. And actually, let me just grab it out and I'll show you the motorized one as well. You're not gonna spin with it because it's, that's, this is the motorized one. I got green uh, beads set up in there because I was doing some leaves, some flower leaves. But um, it spins in both directions. I would just take the top off. I got all my lovely beads in there. It can spin to one side and spin to the other side and the batteries are flat. <laughs> oh my, oh no, it's going, that's it. So we spin one way and then spin the other way. And it spins just at the right, the right speed for you to pick up your beads. So I really do love it. Maybe it wasn't down flat. It only takes a couple of AA batteries. So it's really great to, you know, it does make a bit of a noise, but um, really great, great one to use. When I was doing the beaded flowers, I had my children sitting there with it and spinning all the beads on the wire for me, bless them. Christopher was memorized by it. Um, so it was a really great thing to use. So I've been spinning, I got quite a lot of length here now. So we're gonna start making our necklace. Let me just get these double beads what stuck together off of my strand because they're gonna annoy me. Margaret's saying I have the battery one as well. I got it from CC when Sarah was on with Beads Direct. You know, these tools have been around for quite some time now, and um, they're just a really great addition for anybody to use. Right, I'm going to pop this spinner to the side, right to the side, because you know me, I will send the beads flying. And I'm going to remove this needle from my thread. And we're going to start constructing our, we're going to start doing one of our, um, it's, it's up to you, I guess, if you want to add a couple of little decoration beads to your um, design. I do like to have something, I would like maybe this crystal is a little bit further down now. And this shows you as well, when you do something, um, you know, a couple of years ago, and then you come back to it and you rethink the design and do it slightly differently. So let me just grab some crystals. So I'd span the majority of those seed beads on there. You're gonna have to come in and pick some up because the pattern we're creating here is one bead, one seed bead, one crystal bead, one seed bead. I'm just gonna grab a needle. Sarah's saying if you're right-handed, spin it anti-clockwise, and that's why I said that I can. I usually do spin it both directions because um, if you hold the hook um, needle with one hand, after some time your hand can get tired. So it's great to sometimes change direction as well, whether you're right or left-handed. Just gonna thread my needle up. So because this thread is a little bit thicker, I just come on. Let's try a different. Sorry. Let's try a different needle. I've got so many needles in my little mouse here. This is where I keep all my needles nicely tucked in there. But um, 
I usually put new ones in there, but after a while the new ones mix up with the old ones. And when you've been using a needle for some time, the eye can close up a little bit and it's harder to open or close it. Right, so I just got some beads out. I'm gonna pick up a crystal and another seed bead, crystal and another seed bead, just to create a little pattern here adding them up and then I, um, I'm i going to do a shorter amount down to my larger bead and my um, flower itself and I'm going to count those beads because I want exactly the same there anyway. So another crystal, another seed. So let's go with five crystals here but this is entirely your designs. You can even add some of the bigger ones or it's really up to you. I'm just going to use five crystals there and take one of these larger crystals as well. I think this one is going to match my top completely. So I got one. If I say I'm going to add 20 seed beads, So you can see, that's 10, that now I'm picking up the seed beads one by one. And how slow is this compared to when you use the bead spinner and you can really speed the process up. And here I've got sort of a, a fleecy material on my desk and I'm not picking the seed beads up. Of course, I'm just stabbing my needle to them. So that's 20. So I want a short length and I'm going to pick up a larger crystal because I want the larger crystals on the top of my rose. Now the rose has two holes, one got one at the top and one at the bottom. But um, when I did this one, I didn't add any seed beads sort of on top of the rose. And with this one, you can't really see it so much because the thread is dark as well. But I wanna add a few seed beads just at the top to give a better finish. So I'm gonna pick up um, maybe about six seed beads after my larger crystal. And quite simply, just gonna go through the hole on my rose, and I'm gonna pick up another six seed beads. And I'm gonna go back through this big crystal. That's it. Now, temporary, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back through these seed beads again when I bring the other end of my uh, thread. So I'm just gonna leave this here. I'm gonna leave the needle in there. It's gonna need it later on. And then I'm gonna take the other end, add a needle to that one. Try to grab one of the newer needles. Sandra saying good morning, joining a bit late. Um, Camille is saying easy eye one. <laughs> yes, I love the easy eye needles as well, but with the easy eye needles, because both ends are sharp, I end up always stabbing with my stabbing myself. I started to use the longer ones and they they're great as well. Right, so that's, yeah, that will be about the right length. So I'm gonna do my little pattern again here. So I'm gonna pick up a crystal, pick up a seed bead, crystal, seed bead, crystal, seed bead. Another crystal another seed bead just so I have five crystals just to repeat this pattern here just to repeat this pattern here oh I've got two crystals stuck together there I'll tell you what we do we made a little bit of a mistake here because I forgot to add a seed bead between but what we can do to remedy it because I don't really want to take it all the way back I'm gonna make the same mistake on this side 
So just add two crystals next to each other. At least it's going to look like even. Oh. This shows you even us when talking and picking up beats. At the same time, we can make mistakes. But sometimes you can say, well, that was a deliberate pattern design. So see, we got the same mistakes. And actually, looks quite cute, the two crystals together next to each other. So I'm going to pick up another 20 seed beads. And then I'm going to join my tail and my working thread together. That's five. Dorothy is saying the rose bundle is brilliant for you. Thank you, Simon and Kitty. Um, yes, we have got um, some um, bundles left. There weren't too many left. Um, I think it's got some of the triangle flowers in there as well, but I'm not 100% sure because it's pre-bagged and it's pre-made. And what we have is what we have. Once they're gone, they're gone. They just make, you know, a better value, I guess. But the kits are great as well because... Um, they would be 15 pound. So these seed beads, these FGB seed beads, they, um, I think this color what I'm using, they're three pound 50 for um, a 50 gram bag. And if you think of Toho, you probably would get like a 10 gram bag for that much. Right, so we're right at the end. And now quite simply, I'm just gonna tie my tail end and my working thread together here. just like that a right over left and coming back again make sure your loops don't get caught up any of the seed beads on your strand right nice and tight that's it now before I cut my ends off I'm gonna take my thread up one way into the seed beads Just take it up a few seed beads and before I cut it off I'm gonna do another half hitch knot let's take them up to the crystals and we do a half hitch knot by the crystals just to extra secure it because we're not adding a clasp to this necklace because it's a longer necklace so you can just quite simply get it over your head and sometimes it's great to you know there is no fuss about and there's no doing lobster clasps up so i just taken it up to the top and pull this right through and i'm just going to do a half hitch knot so i'm going to go right under my thread path here what are the seed bits listed as on your website they listed under Actually, Simon, can you pop a link up if you're watching? Just did a half hitch knot there. I'm going to go through another couple of beads and I'm going to do another one just to secure it even further. So I'm going under my thread path. I'm not going through any of the beads. You can see this loop is forming. I'm going to come through this loop and just pull that type and that forms a tiny little knot. Then I'm gonna go through a few more seed beads because I don't wanna cut my tail end right next to my knot. And with that, I pulled that little knot into that seed bead as well. So it's really nice and secure. So the seed bead's called FGB seed beads. Of Sarah, if you're watching, would you be able to pop a link up there? We got hundreds of different colors of these. And now, uh, quite simply, I'm going to do the same for the other side as well. So I'm going to come through a couple of seed beads. Pull this knot slightly out because it's just seeped into the hole of that seed bead. And I'm going to travel up all the way to my crystals. 
and do a couple of one thread knots there as well. And let's go through this seed bead. And I'm gonna go right under the thread there, go through this loop and pull that knot nice and tight. Again, I'm gonna go through a couple of more crystals and do another one thread knot. Again, gonna come through, make sure I don't get caught with the beads because I don't want this loop to sort of loop over the beads next door. I want it exactly where I did it. So I usually hold it down with my thumb and either in the index finger or middle finger to direct that knot where I exactly want it to go. I'm just gonna go come through a few more seed beads and just trim the end off. And with that, we have created one of our now you can add you can repeat this process like you know you can just leave it as a one strand um i will show you in a minute i will turn the camera around and put it on you will create it as a what you can create it just as a one strand necklace like this one you can add another strand to it as i did with uh, these necklaces just to fill it up to make it fuller but equally you could add three strands or four strands how many strands you ever want to have thick you want this going back towards the back of your neck so that's that's the top part that's really how easy it is to create um the top part and it's, it's going to be really nice and decorative and the bottom part is slightly different because here we're going to have to go up one of our fringes and come over so you see you can see here you can see the threads and i really don't like that so we're going to cover that with seed beads um you're going to come back down and add a few more beads to the bottom to create a little tassel you don't have to do this tassel you could just leave your necklace like that if you want or you can do it you can make a shorter tassel it's really a sub to you i quite like the tassel because when you walk around or you know you walk they, they make this little sort of jingly sand as well Oh, Sarah's put a link up for the FGB seed beads. Um, Annie's saying, do you sell needles for bead spinning? We haven't got any separately at the moment. But um, they are available. With the, they come with the wooden spinner itself. You get one. But I, I look into it and um, I'll get some in. Not a problem at all. If you already got your spinners, perhaps you just want the needles. I'll get Simon on the case. Right, so for the bottom, what I really want to do to create, that's the one I'm going to pick up. I'm going to start at the end. So I'm going to knot my, um, I'm going to knot a seed bead onto my thread. So I'm going to just take some thread from my spool. I'm going to add this easy eye in and we're going to spin some. Now, again, you're going to have to measure it with a, don't count the beads and just measure it with a ruler. And I have my ruler right here. There's a little sort of hole on top of my drawer right next to my um, beading crafting table here. But I suspect one of the little munchkins have borrowed it for one of their projects they were doing and it's, it hasn't come back. So I just trim the end of this thread. My nails are so thick, usually it's, yeah, that's it to get this apart you just, just push down with your nails on the top of the needle itself but my nine my nails are so thick i've been doing my own nails since we've been locked down and things gonna hopefully they're gonna be open back up soon right so i'm just gonna take one seed bead to start with and i'm gonna knot this seed bead right at the bottom of my thread so i want probably you don't want a very long thread maybe just over a feet so about 
30 centimeter of thread you're going to need for this fringe if that and i'm just quite simply i'm just going to add a knot to the bottom there we're going to work the little tail off later on so don't worry about that we're going to pull that into the bead but i'm just going to knot it so it's not going to move it's going to be right there acting acting as a stopper bead for me and then i'm going to pick up actually i'm going to do, 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 do i'm going to pick up larger crystal I just want to see the bead between so I'm going to pick up one seed bead and a smaller crystal so that's going to be my decoration right on the bottom and now I'm just going to spin some beads up for my fringe again very quickly just fry, find the right angle so your beads just jump on there quite easily That's it. I don't want um, a huge length, maybe about two or three inches. But then you can make it as long as you want to. It's really your design. So let's have a look. Maybe just a tiny bit more to lengthen it. Just a few more beads and as you can see I'm spinning it and they're all jumping on there. Now I'm gonna add, I wonder, I probably can take this needle through. I'm gonna add a larger bead so that's gonna be sitting at the top and then again you're gonna need maybe about six seed beads here. I'm gonna try to do it with this needle because I don't want to take it off and re-thread it. So we want about six seed beads, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's it. We want about six seed beads at the bottom here. Pull this down. I'm going to go through that bottom loop of my flower itself. I'm going to pick up another six seed bead. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's it. And then we're going to come through the crystal itself, going back down towards our tail. And pull this up tight. Let's get these out of these guys out of the way. I've got a couple of seed beads there to stick together. I'm just quickly gonna release them by pushing on the top of them and we're just gonna spin enough seed beads to get the same amount of seed beads on this strand as well so we can finish our fringe will be the same size. So it's really nice and easy. Just find that right angle for your needle. Spinning it up, come on. Because this um, wooden one's got like sort of a metal inside, so even when you stop spinning it, is keep going around and round and round. You stop twisting it between your hand. That's it. Um, Chitty's asking, what is the length for the necklace piece? It's entirely a sub to you. I was like, you know, we come in all sort of different shapes and sizes and I'm, I'm I'm not sure how to put this, you know, some, some of us are shorter, like my daughter Lucy, she is five, six now, and my other daughter is five, four. So um, 
it comes in all sorts of shapes and sizes and this is the beauty of handmade jewelry what you make yourself because you can make it exactly the right size to fit you so if somebody who is a taller person i would make the loop maybe this this length at the top maybe about 80 90 centimeters somebody who's a bit shorter i would probably do 70 80 centimeters but this is the beauty that you can do exactly the right size for you and you know where you like your so let's just double check i think we got a couple beads too many so i'm just gonna take a couple back down um, you can make it exactly the right size you want to do because ne necklaces as well, we got all sorts of different sizes of necks, um, you know, wrist, you make it the size to fit you. But as a rule of thumb, I would probably do, I'm just going to add a small crystal bead on to follow the pattern from the other fringe. I'm going to add another, just a single seed bead on and my larger crystal. And another single seed bead. Let's pull this on the mat. Oops. There we go. And I'm going to pull this. Right. So we got exactly the right length there. I'm going to take my needle out, my curved needle out, because I'm gonna to have to add a straight needle to be able to be gonna knot it again here, just after that seed bead, or you can take it up, but I just like to knot it right next to the seed bead, so um, it's nice and secure at the bottom. Right, I'm gonna pull this up tight because I don't want my, um, you don't want any gaps in your thread at all. So I'm gonna pull this up tight. I'm gonna hold on to this end and I'm gonna create my knot the same way as I would create it when I do my half hitch knot. So I'm holding on to the end. I'm not letting the thread travel back up to create any sort of gaps or lengths there. I'm holding it with, with my thumb and index finger. I'm gonna bring this thread and hook it between the crystal and the seed bead. Then I'm gonna go through this loop. I'm gonna go through a couple of times to form a bigger knot. And probably if I put it down, you can see it better. As I um, pull this tight, and I just, release that knot a little bit as i pull this tight that knot will go right where i want it to be you can also once this gets too small for you to hold on you can take a, another needle and hold your thread down with a needle as well so you don't lose that there. I think I just pulled it through. I just pulled it through too quick and my knot is traveled down. Oh god, what day am I having today? So I need to go back. I'm really sorry and release these knots and pull it further up. Oh, what a nightmare. See, I'm sitting here trying to be really nice and professional to you and things happen, even with me and with Sarah as well. Oh, never mind. I'll, I'll do that in a minute because I need to bring it up closer to me so I can see what I'm doing when I'm working in the light box like I'm working here my hands are actually quite far away from me um, right under the camera and sometimes I can't see properly 
what I'm doing. I will sort this out in a minute. So that's it really. That's how easy it is to make your own sort of longer necklace. I'm gonna turn the camera around and put this on for you. Uh, once you finished it, I would take the ends back in through, do a couple of half, half hitch knots um, further up and just trim the end and that's your um, little fringe is done. Now, when I do the second fringe, I would add the bottom or, or, or third fringe actually because we've got a couple of them here, a third and fourth one. I would add the bottom as I added the first time. Then I, then I add the length of the seed beads I need. And then I would go through this big bead right here, go through the seed beads, come back down and add more fringes as well. But let's <laughs> turn the camera around. This is really gonna annoy me now that not is didn't go where I want it to go. But um, hey ho. Oh, Joe's saying, don't worry if you get the idea. Well, you can see it happens to the best of us, I guess, everybody. Um, some days you can do things very quite easily and then just sort of pick it up and it just happens. And to, days like today, when I got the oopsies, I always say, or dropsies, um, anything I touch, I guess it's either drop it or, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Right, so do excuse the threads at the bottom, but let me just pop this on. So it's a bit longer. I could have made it a little bit longer to sit a further down, but that's the whole idea of it, to make something without a clasp, goes over your head, really easy to take off or put on. Let me just put this black one on so you can see probably better on my top. This one is a little bit longer, so that one goes a little bit further down as well. But, um, you know, in the summer when you're nice and hot, you just want something going around your neck, really nice and thin, and um, it's really easy to create, but the bead spinner will save you loads of times. So if you haven't got one, it's worth investing to one of those. And um, just have a little play. The roses are panned on their own in the kits. Um, if you want to have a look at them, I matched the colors up. I was there for quite some time, um, matching the seed beads up for the right colors of the the roses so they already in there for you we got one two three four five six seven colorways there and um if you go into it you get five of the roses don't forget you get your seed beads you get your crystal and you get your needle and thread for 9.99 and it will make you five necklaces as well like this so it's really you know it's really a great um great way to create some summer crafting fun, I guess. Um, you can add one strand to go into the back or you can add two strands, it's really up to you. Um, spread your materials around as you want to make it, but it's a really nice and easy make. Um, you can, you know, with the bead spinners, in no time you can have a lovely necklace. Uh, Jenny's saying you haven't said about the thread. So the thread I've been using is we bought this in a couple of years ago. This is from China. This is a little bit thicker than Superlon size D. So I don't tend to use it for a lot of weaving projects. It's really, really strong. Um, you can't break it with hand at all. Very, very strong thread. Um, I don't tend to use this a lot for uh, weaving projects because when you have to go backwards and forwards with uh, a seed beads, it's really, you know, it fills up the holes on the beads. But something like this, you want like, you know, the extra strength in your necklaces. So it's a really good great to use this one and we will add uh, little spools i got a big one for home but we'll add the little spools in your kits to use it as well um dorothy saying can wait to make this this will dress up my t-shirts and plain tops as well absolutely well this is the thing i like to wear a lot of plain tops just sort of a v-neck one or a round neck one especially when you you know at home or you're doing something you can just you're buttering a bad you don't really want to dress up but then you know if the doorbell rings or if you have to pop out somewhere have to pop out on the shops just pop a necklace on there and that's it you all of a sudden looks more dressed up what you wear before so it's really great they really do dress up this is keep my hair is gonna annoy me my hair is so long now i need to go and find um 
thankfully the hairdresser is open now. I need to go and go go for a haircut and um, find somewhere to. But as I heard the other day, one of my friends, she was trying to book one with uh, um, one of the salons because they started to take bookings now that they were booked up for the next three weeks up the road. So I don't know. We see maybe in maybe I grow maybe I was just grow out. We will see. We see what happens. Right. So thank you so much for watching me today. Please do share the video because we want to get as many people we can in the crafting fun. Um, do like our page. Join our groups. There is so many like-minded people at um, creating loads of different techniques and doing loads of diff different. Um, Sue Singh, did you say it makes five? Yes, so you get five roses. I'm saying five because you get five roses in your um, kit. Obviously, there is no clasp involved. You can do a single strand or you can, you know, do a double strand to for your necklaces. But it's depending on, um, like, you know, how many fringes you're going to add to the bottom, how, how much you're going to use your seed bead up, but there is five roses in the kit for £9.99, so £2 to make, I think that looks really good for £2 to make, and um, you know, it's it's up to your design, you can take it as little or as, as far as you like. So, it's Sarah going to be tomorrow, I'm going to have a lay-in, and um, she's going to do some lovely wire bangles, um, I've seen um, one of the pictures she sent through, it's going to look really, really great, so do tune on that, it's going to be something a bit more special, and she's going to be using some semi-precious beads as well, which is always great to do something, like, you know, if you want to make somebody a birthday present, or Christmas present, or anything like that, you might want to use um, some more precious materials i guess but um bid the bangle has it made you're only using a few beads so a strand of beads can make you quite a few of them so do tune tune in for that tomorrow at 10 o'clock um here on totally beads um share the video join our groups um everybody have a lovely day i would love to see if you make anything pop a picture into one of the handmade books um because i do go through it um later on and have a look and i i love seeing what you are making and taking our designs even further um Margaret saying, thank you, Gucci. Great demo. Best hour of the day for me. Oh, bless you, lovely. Well, I do look forward to these, these ones as well because it's really sort of starts my day and it's a really nice interaction with people. And um, so you such a thank you so much for following us and watching us, I guess. Right. Tomorrow, Sarah's going to be with you and um, I'm going to sign off now. Stay safe, um, take care, keep on beading and I will see you, I think, the next time I'm on. I didn't check my diary. Uh, we brought everything up until the 29th of July. And um, my head is like a sieve. Everything goes through. I think it's next Wednesday I'm back. Is it Wednesday? Sarah, if you dare. Or no, Sarah, no, Sarah's at the studios on Wednesday. Definitely. So, I don't know. I'll be back with you soon. Sarah's with you tomorrow. See you later. Bye.